Hello everyone, welcome back to the second episode of the series on my channel where I speak you through my journey into motorsport and hopefully give off a couple of tips about what I learned along the way. So in the first episode we spoke about the cost of motorsport and in today's video we're going to be speaking about which championship you might want to race in. So we're going to be focusing on the United Kingdom because that's the sort of field of view I had looking ahead for my race in 2019. But of course if you're from different countries there will be different organisations and different clubs uh, producing race meetings so go out there and find it for yourself. So my decision was I wanted to race in a championship or a series that allowed two drivers per race. And that's because in my mind it was going to be the slightly cheaper way into getting into motorsport because of course I don't want to keep mentioning it but it was a university project. We had a restrictive budget and I needed to make this on the smallest budget possible but also make sure it was an interesting story and one of the cheaper ways in is doing an endurance series where two people can split the costs so I got in contact with the 750 Motor Club because they run multiple endurance championships and they put me in contact with someone called Sam McKee and that's the BMW you would have seen on my social media he ran that car alongside me and it was really really good fun and yeah it's a pity it didn't all work out, but it was a really, really great experience. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, after that DNF, I had to go around and frantically get something worked out for me because otherwise I was not going to have an end to my documentary. So with very little weeks notice, I came into contact with someone that I'd sort of met through the series before, and that was someone called Rod Burley, who races in a championship called the CMMCS. And thankfully, just, I guess... It, maybe it was supposed to be. I got in contact with them. They had an endurance race in two weeks' time at the same track. The only problem, of course, it was in a completely different car. I basically needed to get everything all sorted within a couple of weeks. But thankfully, the CMMCS, which is a great little club in the south of England, really got it all sorted for me. They put me in contact with someone called Chris and Marcus. They got me sorted with the endurance race. I was going to be sharing with Chris in a 30-minute endurance race this time, but it all got sorted at a very quick pace. And, of course, that's thanks to the great people I met along the journey and the CMMCS, which had a great little group of people that really made sure it happened for me in such a short space of time. So as I mentioned earlier on, there are so many different clubs you could race in and of course I'm going to be looking at ones in the United Kingdom because that's where I'm from, that's where I had the experience and this is sort of the names I understand because they're the ones that I could be racing in in 2020 along with the ones I raced in in 2019. So I'm going to go through the bigger clubs in the UK, of course. There are way more than this and you could just go on forever with these and yeah i'm not going to be here all day i'm going to try to go through these as uh, quickly as possible because i know not all of them are going to be directly relevant to what everyone wants to do but there are lots of choices so you will find one that does fit you so let's start off with the big ones the msvr so they hold big events like the formula 3 in the united kingdom as well as the Mini Challenge, which is going to be on the British Touring Car Package in 2020. So that's a big championship um, for any sort of touring car drivers trying to go through the ranks. But it also does hold some big club level championships. One of the biggest, uh, or two of the biggest sort of club level championships in the UK, actually the Track Day Trophy, regularly getting 35 cars on the grid. Absolutely fantastic, especially for to new guys like me. And it's definitely a championship I'm looking at possibly racing in in 2020. And you've also got the likes of the Production BMW Championship, sort of, I think it's late 80s, early 90s BMW 3 Series probably wrong in that regard but it's a championship that has interested me a little bit and you know I might go down that route but they're both big championships in different ways obviously production BMW is much more of a single make championship well it is a single make championship and track day trophy is kind of like if you've got a saloon car or just a race car a slower race car of sorts you'll be eligible in one way or another to get involved with that one. So the Track Day Trophy is one that's loved by many club racers. So that's maybe one you should look out for on the MSVR side of things. BRSCC holds a whole host of racing. It goes right from the top of British motorsport with the British GT Championship and also holds some big a sort of junior and club level championships like MX5 racing that's loved by many people around the world and they, you know, they hold one of the MX5 championships here in the UK. Next up on my list is Bark, B-A-R-C. They're possibly the biggest organisation in the United Kingdom. They at least hold probably the biggest car racing championship in the UK which is the British Touring Car Championship and they also hold a lot of support series for those championships as well so I think they're 
Clio Cup possibly, as well as like Janetta's, possibly Porsche's as well. I think they all sort of come under the Bark banner, but of course that's a bit more towards the top level of uh, racing in the United Kingdom. But they also go down to grassroots motorsport in loads of different tin top categories and even 2CV racing. So if that's a thing for you, you know, Bark's the organisation where you can get your 2CV out on track. The 750 Motor Club is renowned for its club level racing and keeping its prices at a minimum. I experienced this myself, as I mentioned earlier on. There are so many different classes, all of which are based at club level racing. A lot of the other ones we've mentioned already are sort of a mix between big races like British GT, British Touring Cars and club racing as well. Whereas the 750 Motor Club is sort of all based around getting on track for a small amount of money or a small amount of money as you can get out on track in racing. So they're definitely one of the, the better clubs for club level racing, I've got to say. And that's not just because I experienced it. That's, I think, well known throughout the motorsport world is that the 750 Motor Club is really designed around club level racers. So many different championships there. I'll try to leave a link in the description down below of all of these organisations so you can go and check them out for yourself. Of course, there will be different ideas about what you want to do personally, so maybe the 750 Motor Club isn't for you. But in general, for club level racing, I'd say 750 Motor Club's got to be up there. They're one of the best sort of organisations to go through. As mentioned, the CMM CS, the championship I finally did my actual race in, um, that was a great little organisation. They only have three championships. They have the, like the Super Saloons, sort of tin tops and then Intermarks. But, you know, it's growing. It's in its first season. So it's it's only going to really get bigger from here and it's already got a great little community around it. That's what I found because it was really nice that I could just speak to all of the drivers and I'm a shy guy. It might not come across on YouTube, but I'm a shy guy in, in real life. So, when people are coming up to me and just sort of saying stuff, it obviously it's nice for me because I don't really have that confidence. So it was nice that everyone was sort of really just helpful in my first race weekend. Everyone was just passing on information. Even the competitors in my same class were giving me information and help about how I can just take on this first event. So that was really appreciated. If you have a tin top or a sort of special saloon car, a nice little championship to get involved with. And as I said, I think in the last one, the entry costs are very cheap in comparison to a lot of them, if not some of the cheapest in the UK. The MG Car Club or the MGCC is probably the perfect place if you own an MG and want to go racing. They've got a lot of different classes within their organisation and weirdly my race in the CMM CS, there's a lot of abbreviations in this, was actually alongside the MG Car Club. So I got to sort of understand what the MG Car Club was like with it without even really sort of racing in it. I saw it was a nice little community. In my opinion, it looked like a really nice place to, to get involved with. So if you're interested in classic racing, that obviously narrows your options down a little bit, but the two bigger organisations in that regard are the HSCC and the CSCC. The I guess the cheaper form or cheaper way into motorsport is normally get a sort of a 90s to early 2000s car. That's going to be the more affordable way into motorsport. But if you're spending a little bit more up front and want to get involved with historics, maybe it's best to go down that route and actually get involved with the historic car clubs rather than going down the modern route and racing your historic car ac across maybe, uh, you know, uh, jazzed up Citroen Saxo. Um, <laughs> maybe, that's, maybe that's not for you. Maybe you want to race with more period cars. So if you want to race in historics, those two are probably the two ones for you. As I mentioned, I've only really probably experienced two racing sort of championships. And even though that doesn't give me too much experience in this whole field, I do kind of get the vibe that everyone does want to help you. Everyone wants to give you a bit of information to make sure that you enjoy the experience. Because at the end of the day, everyone's there to enjoy it. Of course, winning and being successful is nice, but everyone's there to race a car and have a bit of fun. So we don't, you know, people don't want to get involved with all the the other stuff sometimes and I think I got the idea from the CMM CS and the 750 Motor Club both of them just wanted to give a great experience to their racing drivers and you know I got that great experience in both of the times that I was out on track with these two clubs so I much appreciate that and I'm sure a lot of the other clubs are like that as well so I'm excited personally to uh, see what happens in 2020 hopefully I'm going to be racing in a few other different clubs as well as I mentioned work's not going to allow me to dedicate myself to one championship but I think overall I'm looking forward to just really getting involved and getting my teeth into a bit more racing because you know I absolutely loved it in 2019 I'm looking forward to it more in 2020.
So let's just quickly dive into the two championships I did race in, just if you want to get a bit more information about these. So the 750 Motor Club, as I mentioned, has many different options. I went for the road sports category, which has four different classes and races of 45 minutes. And you get a decent amount of time on track, which is actually great, especially if you're splitting between two drivers. Say you're doing a rive and drive that nicely splits the cost in half. Maybe that's something you want to do. So that's the reason why I went with that, because I wanted to keep the cost down, but also I wanted someone to learn off of, and Sam was very helpful in that regard. Oh. Then my other experience with the CMM CS. Now, normally they don't do endurance races. I think they just do one a year. Uh, but that was all great. I think like, getting to know Rod Burley, he helped me out. He mentored me for a bit, gave me a bit of tuition. And, you know, he put me in contact with the CMM CS, which he sort of works with quite closely. And I've got to say, the CMM CS was just a great atmosphere to be a part in. And... You know, both of them were great, I've got to, I'm not going to lie, but I think it was all kind of just meant to be. It all just sort of happened really nicely with the CMMCS, and uh, hopefully you'll get to see what happened in the uh, documentary soon. I don't want to spoil it because we've been waiting off so long, um, but yeah, nonetheless, I think the CMMCS was great. So as I mentioned, I only had to deal with two different championships and organisations when going on my journey, but I'm going to be dealing with more in 2020. Something that I've actually learned and think that is a good way to test these championships is Understand response time, for example, is, you know, if you send an email just with a little bit of information asking a bit more about the championship, if they don't respond for like a week, then you maybe think maybe these guys are, I don't know, they're struggling to cope with the amount of questions coming through, or maybe they're just not interested. Who knows? But you know, the people that are coming back to you straight away with information, they want to get more people on board. I think that's the sort of environment you want to surround yourself with. Now, my experience, the majority of clubs are getting back to you very, very quickly, but think that maybe some people aren't responding through an email so check out their Facebook messenger um, check out their phone number I mean the best way to get involved with someone or talk to someone is on the phone as daunting as it sometimes can be picking up the phone is maybe the best option sometimes and once again gauge the sort of characteristic over the phone are they really interested in getting you involved if not maybe steer away from that championship and some, find somewhere else where but there will be one out there for you so just make sure you spend the time you'll get there eventually and there will be a championship you love racing in and really enjoy but don't stop there. Once you've sort of understood whether this is the championship for you or this is the organisation for you, go out and watch the races. It's such an important thing that I did and I think it really, really helped me just commit to going into the 750 Motor Club. Of course, with the, the second race in the CMMCS, I didn't really have any time. I just sort of went off the experiences and the opinions I had around me and that told me it was a good place to go. But the 750 Motor Club, I visited the year before. I understood a lot about the championship, spoke with the people involved and just got a grip of this is a place that I want to be. So that's something I think was really important in making that decision. And it turned out being a great decision, unfortunately, until the car had the issue. Um, but nonetheless, go out there, visit the events, watch the people, speak to the drivers. I mean, everyone, you know, club level drivers aren't like Formula One drivers. They're not inaccessible. You can speak to them. So definitely go and do that. If you see a car that you're interested in or see something that you might want to race yourself, go over there and speak to them. You know, understand if the car's reliable. What's the, the faults? What are the good points, the weak points? and so on. That's just so much information you can get very early on. So I know you probably want an opinion about certain series within different championships, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead now and try and give a couple of different opinions about what is what, and maybe certain championships you should be looking out for in different organizations. So the 750 Motor Club, both of the endurance championships in the 750 Motor Club are big thumbs up, everyone loves them. Um, as are the stock hatches, Formula 1000s, Formula V, now, if you're looking at MSVR, you know, their track day championships are really, really massive. I mean, I think a lot of people say that the MSVR club championships are the biggest in the UK and in a lot of ways some of the best. So maybe they're two you should be looking out for straight away. Both the CSCC and the HSCC seem to be the places you need to go if you want to race a classic car. I haven't done too much digging into the championships, particularly in there, but there do seem to be a nice range of options in there for whatever area you're going to race in. Even slightly more modern cars are eligible to race in a couple of their championships as well, so don't write them off. Bark has a lot of championships, but at club level, a lot of their more popular options seem to be the Citroen C1s. I watched them recently absolutely mad and then also a lot of the variants of the mini championships are very popular as well the hyundai coupe cup also a championship i watched recently has big numbers and very very competitive somewhere where i think that maybe people don't think about but the hyundai coupe cup is actually quite a good series if you're looking to get into motorsport on a budget the brscc seems to have some of the strongest grids in the uk uh, in particular the formula four championships 
Um, the club sport trophy, similar to the road sports championship, an endurance event which always get 35 plus cars. And then the Civic Cup and the BMW Compact Cup are two very, very great series for getting into club motorsport, especially the BMW Compact Cup. I think that's seen by many people as one of the most competitive and fun championships in the UK for a novice getting into the sport. As mentioned, my race in the CMM CS was with the MG Car Club and a personal favourite of mine in the MG Car Club is the, uh, the MG Trophy. They've got some great coverage on Amazon actually. Amazon Video produce a lot of content for the MG Trophy so if you want some TV time on Amazon then the MG Trophy is possibly a championship you want to race in and some fantastic racing uh, throughout the season. I've been watching every single event on Amazon. I actually really love the MG Trophy, kind of envious of the people racing in it. Looking outside the, uh, that in the MG Car Club, you've got the Metro Cup, Midgets, Sprites, loads of different championships. For whatever MG you own, there'll be something you can race in. Finally, the CMM CS, as I said, a great championship first and foremost, but also a couple of different options if you race a saloon car. Uh, I raced in the Southern Division, I think there is a Northern Division as well, and probably the best value for money championship in the United Kingdom. If you're looking to race a saloon car in the uh, South of England at least, it's probably probably the best one in terms of value for money. Maybe not the strongest grids in 2019, that's something I, I have to admit, but nonetheless I think it's something that in 2020 is un undoubtedly going to grow. So a lot of options in there for club level racing in the UK, whether you want to race in single make championships, endurance racing, or just want to have fun in a saloon car. There are so many options out there. So for me personally in 2020, I'm not really sure what I want to do in, in terms of exactly what series I want to race in. But you know, there's a couple of options. I want to do some endurance racing. I want to do 45 minutes to one hour races. You know, that's, that's where I want to be really, but I probably will be doing some sprint races as well. It really depends on what car I end up buying. Typically, most cars will be eligible for multiple championships, so don't be put off if you enter a championship, you don't particularly like it. There will be another championship out there for you. So hopefully this has been a bit of an insight about where you can race your car in 2020 and the future. As I said, it's a great world out there. There are so many different places you could end up racing your car. So, you know, just spend a bit of time looking through all of them and then you'll end up finding the perfect car for that and hopefully have a lot of fun when racing. So once again, I'd like to highlight the kind of point of this series. Of course, I'm looking ahead to 2020. I'm going to be doing more racing myself and hopefully going to be alongside some other YouTubers as well, which is going to be really exciting and I'm looking forward to seeing who wants to do that. So... That's going to be documented every single week on my YouTube channel next year and that's going to be focusing on the race meetings themselves as well as the parts in between, the stuff that doesn't really get documented, you know, problems with the car, stuff I've got to overcome to understand how I'm going to be quick out on track, work with simulators, speaking with drivers. Hopefully it's going to be a really nice series you're going to be seeing on my channel every single week next year. So stay tuned. I'm looking forward to sort of debuting that at the early part of 2020. And yeah, I'm looking forward to the future here. Hopefully it's going to be a really good one. So thank you for watching, guys. Your feedback is appreciated as always. And I'll see you soon for another one of these videos. Goodbye.